one of my favorite PS3 games was Heavy Rain. I'll never forget playing it for the first time. It had its flaws and definitely wasn't perfect, but it was so unlike anything else I had ever played. This compelling interactive drama where you, the player, had direct control over these characters, decided their fate, and determined the outcome. Now here we are eight years later with Detroit Become Human, the latest entry from David Cage in the interactive story genre. Just how far has he and Quantic Dream come in their storytelling and game design? Well, let's take a look. The game takes place in Detroit in 2038, where androids are bought and sold to serve humans in nearly all capacities. But despite their integral roles in humanity, androids are treated as the poor dredges of society. To the humans they serve, they are nothing more than plastic tools. Yet to the people who have been replaced by and lost their jobs to them, they are treated with contempt and hatred. Using Detroit as the setting for this narrative was an interesting choice because in this parallel universe the city is booming as the hub of the android industry, just as they have been the hub of the automobile industry for so long. The city is just as much a character in the story and the locations and set pieces are dripping with atmosphere. Right off the bat, the game gives you control of Connor, an android sent to defuse a hostage situation involving another android and a little girl. The stakes are high, you only have a limited amount of time to gather evidence and then handle the situation how you see fit, and the opening sets this amazing tone for the rest of the game. Each decision you make or don't make, no matter how small or insignificant it may seem at the time, will directly impact the outcome of the mission, and whenever the outcome is, it too will have an impact at some later point in Connor's story. But this butterfly effect concept isn't exclusive to Connor. It extends to the two other main characters, Kara and Marcus, who are also androids. The narrative revolves around deviants, androids who have broken free of their programming and rebelled against their human masters. Deviancy has become a polarizing topic in society. Are androids their own intelligent species worthy of their own representation in civil rights? Or are they simply pieces of plastic designed by humans for our enjoyment? The three main characters deal with these questions in their own way, and their motivations shape the decisions that are made. Marcus takes it upon himself to lead the Deviants to equal rights and freedom, while Kara is more concerned with taking care of Alice and giving them both the lives they never got to live. And Connor is at the opposite end of the spectrum, seeing Deviants as problems that must be solved and believing androids to have one specific overarching task, to serve humans. But at the same time, Connor deals with these deviants firsthand, and has no choice but to witness the implications of breaking the chains and becoming free. The story deals with some serious themes. Racism, segregation, equality, love, friendship, war, identity, but it never felt too preachy. I guess as a whole you get the concept that humans are bad, but really you don't because there are plenty of moments of hope and change that it feels like more of a representation of the world today as opposed to a lecture about how shitty humans are. And I like that. I for one see both the best and worst aspects of humanity in my daily life, so I welcome these topics in gaming as long as they don't get overbearing, which I never felt the game did during my experience. The story is thought provoking. It makes you question your own morality and makes you decide which choices you would make. It makes you question your own identity and your place in society. There were times I thought about the way I live my life and whether I'm doing enough to make this world a better place. The narrative is driven by these decisions, all of which you make for yourself. You get to decide if you want to be obedient or deviant, if you want to be passive or aggressive, if you want to be peaceful or violent. It was thrilling to make these decisions and actually see the consequences of those decisions which extend beyond just a cutscene that shows you the result of your actions, but instead manifest themselves as a highway in which your story will traverse through. I posed the question at the beginning, just how far has David Cage and Quantic Dream come in their storytelling and game design? Well, the answer lies in the three main characters and their decisions. In going with the android servitude climate in which Detroit is set, all three begin the game as submissive machines designed with specific instructions. The real depth begins to show as they each deal with the idea of deviancy, and it affects them in different ways. They each see and come across other deviants, and this idea that androids do not actually have to be compliant with humans at all times begins to cross their minds. This is where you come in. You can make these choices however you see fit. 
the underlying narrative will give you some general ideas about which paths each character would take, but ultimately, it's up to you. It's in this way Detroit is as much a role-playing game as it is an interactive drama. Now, no, it's not a Dark Souls, not a Skyrim, not a Final Fantasy, a Neo, a Persona 5. It doesn't at all fit that category, don't get me wrong. But you're nevertheless deciding which role each character is going to play. This is where I got the most enjoyment. Making Connor a cold, calculated cop, hell-bent on hunting down deviants, making Marcus a Che Guevara, revolutionary-type leader of his people, making Kara a nurturing mother who would give her life for her daughter, or going the other way, giving into Connor's inner deviant and harnessing that remorseful, emotional side, making Marcus a Gandhi, liberating his people by peace, or making Kara resistant to the appeal of disobedience. The game is filled with these serious moral dilemmas. Do you shoot the Tracys and accomplish your mission, or let them go because you feel for them? Do you save your friend Simon from death, or do you save yourself and live to fight the cause another day? Do you sacrifice yourself for your child without hesitation, or do you take the chance that both of you will survive? These questions are just a drop in the bucket in what is an immensely elaborate decision tree. There's diversity in the three characters' actions with some unique mechanics between them. Marcus can do parkour, and Connor's investigations were my personal favorite. Maybe even doing it better than L.A. Noir. There's so much emphasis on finding all of the evidence because if you don't, there's a good chance your story is going to become much more difficult to navigate. Each of the three main characters has at least one, if not multiple, close companions that will directly be affected by your actions. What's interesting about these choices you make is the impact they will have on the supporting characters. What's more interesting is that these supporting characters can themselves affect and be affected by those very decisions you make. It's like a cycle. The relationships you have with your companions will influence the decisions you make in the game, which in turn determines the direction of the story. But with each decision, your relationship with those companions will either become better or more strained, which in turn will affect your decisions again. Well, do I want to try and appeal to them and make the relationship better, or screw them, I'm going to do what I want. And the characters are all fleshed out, with great dialogue that befits their personalities. The relationships are when the characters are at their best. Connor's relationship with Hank really stands out in this regard. And despite the serious themes, there are some genuinely funny moments. Both my appearance and voice were specifically designed to facilitate my integration. Well, they fucked up. I've been talking a whole lot about the element of choice in the game. And make no mistake, the decision trees are some of the most elaborate and well-designed in a game I've played. Each chapter has a flowchart. Some are small, others extremely large. But there are no illusions here. Each decision you make can have immense consequences. One decision here or there might completely open up or lock off an entire chapter later on. And you might not even think at the time that this particular choice is that important, but it very well could decide if someone lives or dies. Because of this, you have to carefully consider your options and think long and hard about your choice. Okay, maybe not that long because you are on a timer. But there's so much variety in the choices that it took me three playthroughs to even play every possible chapter. And even still, there are so many paths I didn't unlock as you can see. The replayability is ridiculous. Three playthroughs add an average of about 10 hours or so each, and there are still things I haven't experienced yet. Now, the biggest shortcoming in Heavy Rain is still prevalent in Detroit. The gameplay, as in the interactivity of the controls given to the player. Gameplay is once again reduced to walking, running, interacting with objects, and everyone's favorite, QTE sequences. Now, this problem isn't specific to Detroit, it plagues all interactive stories, as the game really is one long movie that you're directing. So if this sort of thing isn't your bag, you might not enjoy the game as much as I did. In fact, one of the biggest disappointments is with the quick time events, as they're really not challenging at all. There's only two difficulties, and I'm telling you right now, don't even bother with casual, it's a complete joke. But even on experienced, I never felt like I was going to screw up or get killed during a fight. But this is made up by the level design, something I never expected to be highlighted in a game like this. Everything is compacted into these concentrated areas for you to explore. Yes, you can explore, and I'm not just talking about collectibles, which there are, but exploration can lead you to dialogue unlocks 
which grant you more choices to make. This is especially important with Connor's investigations. And even in the larger areas, the game does a great job in letting you know where to go without holding your hand, like when Kara and Alice are on their own for the first time. There are many locations to go to, yet somehow you're already familiar with the layout, even the first time you arrive. It drives the game forward without wasting your time. Now with that said, there are some slower parts, especially in the beginning with both Kara and Marcus, as it's basically like Housekeeper Simulator, but within the context of the game, it never seemed that problematic because you are a subservient android after all. And going off the theme of choice, if you want to skip some of that, you can. Now you've probably noticed the visuals, and let me just say, the game is freaking beautiful to look at. I couldn't stop staring at the facial animations, quite possibly the best animations in a game to date. There are some scenes it straight up looks like you're looking at a live action Jesse Williams. The way the eyes are animated is so cool, they make Mass Effect Andromeda look like something off Robot Chicken. The lip syncing is also very precise. The way the characters move around looks realistic, even the hair is finely textured. The game is worth buying just to see the graphics and animations alone, and that's just the character models. The weather and lighting effects are superb, the cinematography is excellent whether it be the close-up shots of characters or wider landscape shots. The color palette gives this great sense of style, nearly everything is through these blue lenses that give it this cold feel. The music fits in so effortlessly with each of the three characters having their own compositions. It's a great blend of strings and synthesizers that give way to this futuristic environment. It knows when to be frantic and when to be atmospheric. And there are these really stylish sequences that are just a joy to look at and listen to. God. The voice acting and performances are outstanding. Valerie Curry, Brian Deckard, Clancy Brown, and Lance Henriksen really stood out to me as incredible. But if all these features weren't enough, there's even more still. The freaking main menu talks to you. She comments on the choices you make with emotion, talks about how late you played the night before. She even sings to you. Just a little while longer Everything will be alright Everything will be alright The game is just unique as hell. It had the same wondrous effect on me as Heavy Rain did eight years ago. All the aesthetics act as a great backdrop and even like a supporting character to the story. Now, there are two big problems I had with the story. The first is that the game needed an epilogue. I give them a slight pass because of the many different endings for the three characters and the wealth of choices that shape each one. But an epilogue for each character would have given the player one final scene that ties all the decisions together in summation, for better or worse. And Heavy Rain did a real good job with this. The second problem is that there's a major twist concerning one of the most important supporting characters. I'm not going to spoil it for you, so I apologize for being so vague. But I hated it. I absolutely hated it. Because it went against the entire characterization up until that point. And it really undermined one of the biggest questions posed in the narrative. Can humans and androids learn to coexist? One other aspect, which is both good and bad, is that with these interactive stories, you can totally miss out on some good content because of a wrong decision. I say it's bad because that content may be an hour or even a couple of hours in length, and it may just be the best section you could play. On my first playthrough, I accidentally killed off one of the three main characters, and so the end game was disappointing. But at the same time, I say it's a good thing because it raises the stakes of each decision. You really must be careful and think about each move you make. 
and it shows that there's no illusion of choice here. You see your decisions manifest themselves in heavy ways, and because it adds to the immersive feel, I have to consider this a positive overall. My theory when it comes to gaming is that your enjoyment of a game is directly proportional to the amount of thought and effort that went into making it. That's the best way I can describe Detroit. You can see the attention to detail in almost every aspect. Its flaws are minute when compared to its complexities. So I asked at the beginning, just how far has David Cage and Quantic Dream come in their storytelling and game design? Really far. In fact, they've taken the positive aspects from their previous games and refined them to a T. As far as I'm concerned, they wrote the book on interactive drama. So my final score for Detroit Become Human is a 9 out of 10. I know the genre can turn people off, especially if you're not a fan of these interactive dramas. But there's no denying the game is exceptionally well made. There was so much thought and care that went into it. And it shows in the amazing graphics and animations, the cool and stylish atmosphere and aesthetics, the excellent voice acting, the finely crafted game design and extremely elaborate decision trees, the immense replayability, the overarching yet not overbearing themes of love, friendship, parenthood, equality, and respect. It all feels like a complete package that leaves you satisfied as a player. It's without question worth the $60 price tag, and although I can't tell everyone blindly to buy a PS4 just to get this game, because of the genre, but if you already own one, this game is a must buy. And let me just say too how great it is to get yet another incredible single player experience devoid of an insulting pay to win business model. And man, Sony is killing it with the exclusives. Well let me know in the comments what you thought of Detroit Become Human and what you thought of this review. And as always, thanks for watching. This is our story.